I can hear myself and record now at the same time. Look it up. <laughs> All right. Hey. I'm the leader Big dog, pack of wolves, pack the joint to get up Too high again, no my nigga, I can't link up Too by again, I'm in the sky, nigga, keep up Um, it's made me way more confident about myself And how I carry myself and who I am Um, it's taught, the, well they, the black community have taught me Um, that's okay to be different Um, I don't have to fit into like specific stereotypes um, when I'm like talking to other people and like just being myself. I could just be myself and I could do what I want and it's okay to be unapologetically black. It's just, I mean, like that love-hate relationship that I had growing up and I think all of us can resonate in that. Growing up in this country and just being a man, like it's not even just a minority, it's being black before anything. Um, that's, oh, like, you're built, you're built for life. <laughs> if you're coming up in this country, you're built and you're solid, you're ready. Like, and if it wasn't the community backing me, do you know what I mean? Like, coming up, I went to school with being the only black girl in my year, and I, my sister was the only black girl in her year, and then that was literally it. There was no black boys to speak of, and that was it. So, you had to sort of get beat down to a point where you literally felt like there was nothing, you weren't part of anything, you were alienated. And then I came out and I realized that's some absolute, like, was first of all, but. The community took me back in regardless, do you know what I mean? That's my people, like, I don't, there's no other, like, way of saying it, like, the way I felt so left out, so I, I didn't, I had no clue, do you know what I mean? That there was, there was such empowerment where I'm from and who I'm with, who I'm from, who I'm with and the people that are with me, do you know what I mean? Like, but that was taken away for such a long time and when I finally felt like I found my people, I resonated, it was just the, I have never felt so empowered in my life ever about myself. Um, shaped me a lot, I think. Especially living in the predominant, like England, essentially, it's kind of given me that strength, like with everything that's gone on, um, especially during lockdown with the George Floyd incident. And to be honest, even before that, like growing up from primary school to secondary school, like there was a lot of things that I'd faced from, you know, um, people that were in my school. But because I had that black community around me, I had my family, I had my friends. Yeah, like it's, it, honestly, it's a rock. It's a rock. I'll say that. I would say so definitely so I feel like I listen to a lot of grime a lot of like R&B and stuff so it's definitely like heavily influenced by black culture and black people I think as well a lot of the other music I listen to is quite like within like the heritage of it as well is very much founded in like black people and like the black community and like inspired from it so a lot of the music I listen to is predominantly like black artists. I think going through the same pain at times when they talk about their pain but also going through the same kind of joyful moments as well so it's like those little moments of joy that you get and they kind of merge together as well. At the moment I'm really into like grime, like British grime, like Nox, is it Nox? Yeah, is it Nox? Is, yeah. is that how you say it? Nox. And then you've got people like Kei Trinada, like Charish Gambino, like The Essential. But I just feel like they are, I mean there's obviously other people as well, but they're the ones I can think of off the top of my head. But they are very, they're like the, like the essential part of music and their influences are obviously from other black people as well. So it's just, I don't know, it's just nice. And it's, it's just nice to hear and listen to people that are part of the culture. I'll say Little Sims, I feel like because she's very upcoming, she came from what, like a council state block in London, like independent label artist, I think. Um, very just, it's someone who you can relate to and it's, it's someone, especially with her being a darker woman of colour, it's just very inspiring to see her like where she is now and obviously she's got so much more to do and so much more to go with it. I think specifically within my culture, recently I've been listening to a lot of like, um, like Zambian rock artists. Like this one guy, what's his name? Paul Ngozi. <laughs> Mm. 
he was one of the big like members i think he was one of the people that inspired me to start like producing my own music so like i would say him like he was a proper rock star of the 80s he was quite an like an outgoing kind of character um you know the type of sort of just like do what he wants so like i don't know i've always felt like a reserved person so i just thought i just you know be a little bit more out there yeah <laughs> Everything, everything. It's like that's like that's one part that like you can't take away from me. And like it's one of those things that like it's a it's love hate relationship that I've had all my life. I'm still struggling with it now, but it's everything because there's no one else like me or my girls. Like do you know what I mean? Like there's no one else like us. Hello. Like I think and that's the, I cherish. Like I wouldn't be young and hating myself about it, pushing myself down, and relaxing my hair left, right, and center, and being like even being insecure about weaves and even coming for other black girls for having weaves. Like that's ridiculous. That's disgusting. And like, ever the thought that like people made me feel like that is something that I'm growing out of now and like you know coming to terms with it and just accepting the beauty that it holds and everything that other people, other cultures want to take so bad and do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, with, when it comes to hair or fashion or any sort of like, just anything that comes to expression, black people have it, do you know what I mean? Like it's nothing, if I see a black person with like beautiful, like extravagant hair, I'm not gonna like look twice, well I look twice and be like, that's beautiful, but I'm not gonna be like, oh wow, like, I, that's just coming, like we've been new, do you know what I mean? It's nothing new, like we're always presenting, putting out things that are just, you know, so next level really, do you know what I mean? So it is inspiring, absolutely. You're just like, that's, that's what we can do, that's what we're doing, that's ours, and we're gonna keep doing that, do you know what I mean? I think it was when I was like 15 or 16, like usually my dad would just cut my hair. Um, and obviously, <laughs> obviously, you know how that goes. He gives you the the one everywhere. Takes like three hours. <laughs> yeah, that one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for the first time, I was just like, he was just like, oh, I'm gonna take you to a barber because I can't be asked to cut your hair anymore. For a while, like especially in my early secondary school days, I think I'd look at people like the classic like white guys in my class who had like the like long hair, like the quiff type hairstyle. And I was just kind of like, ah, oh, like, why can't that be me? But I think like along the way, I just sort of, like I learned to just love my hair. I was like, you know what? Like the skin fade that I can get, like the stuff that I can do with my hair is like crazy. I think once you find that out, you're like, these other hairstyles, like they ain't, they ain't all that. Yeah. That's, my, <laughs> that's literally it. So like, you just kind of realize that like, oh, my hair is like, so like, there's so much more to it. And like, the more you start to do with it, the more you like, love it, essentially. Yeah. Working. Yeah. 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 In my everyday, like I do speak um, with like specific words that we use in the black community, um, but I never used to, cause like when I was like younger, like I never actually understood like what certain words meant. And like growing up in a predominantly white school, like I'd have like a certain like way of speaking. And then when I was with my black friends, they'd always either say like I um, spoke too posh or I didn't sound right and I'd get like words wrong. But like now that like I'm around that more, um, there are like some words that I say like way, like way more than others. Like I, I think I say you're moving mad every day of my life. Every five seconds, I'm like you're moving mad. Um, but yeah, yeah, it really does impact my me. Before, when I was younger, I think again growing up in a predominantly white area, it was something that you try and like suppress because, you know, you were the teachers are white, your friends are white. You, you wanna at least. I don't know, at the time, yeah, you want to try and fit in. So you just, you would try and put it down a little bit. But now, as I've grown older, I've started to love being black. Then, yeah, yeah every day like, I'll try and incorporate it. But obviously, you got to code switch sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. So I think, I feel like black culture influences a lot of kind of like society. So I don't know if it's specifically like that. I see like black people speaking a certain way and then I like emulate that, but it's more like very much everyone's speaking that kind of way. So yeah. I'm also speaking that kind of way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I find that I tend to um, I tend to code switch a lot when I'm talking to uh, my black friends, and then also people who aren't necessarily the same race as me or the same ethnicity, I should say, because race is a made-up concept. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just like years of of having grown up around uh, white people. I kind of have like mentally, just subconsciously, I'm just always defending myself around them and trying to assimilate into their culture um, as, a, as a way of kind of like making sure that my impression on them doesn't uh, affect the wider black community. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think someone that I've kind of grown up looking at was um, ASAP Ferg, um, that sort of like American uh, Brooklyn style sort of way. I don't know if I'm really showing the best example now, but like a lot of the time that is probably what I'd um, emulate to. And there's a lot of like creatives out there that you see um, online as well that I always see and like, oh, I might try and copy that into coordinate that. So, yeah. Oh yeah, 100%, like outside was England, at home was Nigeria, so <laughs> everything I wore was like, yeah, pretty much, you know, there's always weddings, there's parties, Thanksgiving at church or, you know, so I'm always wearing, like getting measurements done and yeah, so even now, yeah. I like to think so, yes, but I think like the way everyone dresses in some way is influenced by black culture, whether it be like old and traditional or like new and modern i just feel like there's elements of the way that i dress and that everyone else dresses that is it's very representative of the black culture like your baggy clothing like your jewelry like your nails i mean your hair even <laughs> your hair can even be like a sta like a fashion statement as well come to think of it i've always liked i don't know like big hoops like I know I'm probably not like I could probably go a lot more with it probably with, like rings and necklaces but I just think like hoops and stuff like that are just quite they're very simple but very effective <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, for me, it's in shimmer, oxtail, um, the vegetables on the side. The vegetables were, oh, oh my goodness. The oxtail, sensational. The in shimmer, <laughs> sensational. Those days were great, man. Honestly, like it just brings me back to like, it just reminds me of like good days, like good times. I just think back and I'm like, yeah, that was the meal. To be fair, I think I've had friends over when like my parents have cooked Zambian food and then like, to be fair, like, is it, those situations were a little bit, like, not awkward, but, like, well, yeah, awkward a little bit, just because, like, you sometimes you feel like you have to explain, like, oh, this is a shimmer, this is what we eat. Um, but, like, yeah, it's, a, it's another one of those ones where, like, it's become a, like, point of pride for me to be like, oh, yeah, this is what I eat, like, you know, yeah. So it's really hard because I grew up with, um, like most of my mum so it was like she is uh, like mixed face and she didn't really have like that sort of like she, she's like yeah I didn't really have that much like that sort of powerful or like not the, I don't know it's kind of, kind of a hard one it's like it's, I need to definitely get myself more involved and so I need to like learn more about obviously I know a lot about like 
yeah, like Ivorian food and West African food and stuff like that. But if someone was like, come on, make me up something now. I'm lost, baby girl, I'm lost. Like, don't ask me. <laughs> Do not be asking me. <laughs> but obviously, like, that's something like, so the other week I we went to Huddersfield, there's one Ivorian, it's I'm Ivorian. Um, there's one Ivorian lady who has a pop-up shop and yeah, she made this thing called like, so it's like Jollof, but it's like called Chep. So it's not exactly Jollof, but it's a bit softer, a bit more. And it's something that like Ivorians also make. And I, that like, is something that's like a childhood flavor. And it's like, oh my God, it resonates with me. And like, just like tilapia like fried fish, hello, pl fried plantain, hello, give it to me. Like it's all, it tastes too good, like it's all too good. And like it just, they, you know, when I went to visit Ivory Coast when I was younger, like in only two times I've been there, like it's the one of those sort of cool memories you can't eat, sorry, cool memories you can't like, you know, get rid of. So yeah, I, I definitely would say yeah, so chep and yeah, a nice fried t uh, tilapia and some like, cucumber, tomato on the sides. Ooh, some plantain, let's go, <laughs> I'm hungry now. <laughs> like that, yeah, I'd say that. It's like a lot of people like to say like, oh yeah, Italians love their food and their culture and it makes their family and this and that, or like other like other, other cultures like do this with their food. Like Africa and, and just that family and bonding and food is just like showing your love, do you know what I mean? You're putting your hot, they put the hot pussy into it, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shit, like, <laughs> you see the artist cooking, they're spending hours out there, like, do you know what I mean? Like really putting their whole heart and you just feel that, do you know what I mean? That's family, that's like, that's them like nourishing you and that's just giving you life, like that's food, like, that's something that's so special and so important. And, even the way we, we eat with our hands and you don't eat with your left hand, that's something that white people don't even do. They're just so, that's respect. Like, you, do you know what I mean? That's just, I don't know, it's just net natural to me, anyways. So, yeah.